Welcome to Magnify Him Church, located at 4509 Island Avenue in the Double Tree Hotel Liberty Room. Our Sunday services start with intercessory prayer at 1030, life-changing church at 1045. Mm-hmm. Then our main service starts at 12 o'clock noon oh, yeah. to 1.30 p.m. That ends out our services for today. All right. May the grace of God be with you always. Amen. Coming in the sanctuary. Praise his holy name. Glory to God because God is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy endures forever. Victory. In 2023. Can y'all say that? Victory in 2023. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. Victory in 2023. Amen. Saints this morning. Good morning, Deacon Lumps. Good morning, everybody. Amen. I want to try to get started this morning. Amen. God got a word for you. Amen. And I pray in Jesus' name it'll bless your spirit today. Because we want to talk about in our morning teaching of life changing church. I want to talk about victory in 2023. Victory in 2023. When we talk about victory, number one, we talk about accomplishments. We talk about achievements. Amen. And we talk about success. Success. We want to have a mind coming into this year that we're going to accomplish something. Amen. That we're going to have great achievements. And God is going to bless us with great success. It all begins magnify him with the victory that comes from God. The victory comes from God. I'm in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 6 to 7. 1 Samuel 4, 6 and 7. They said, what is going on? The Philistines asked. What is all this shouting about in the Hebrew camp? When they were told it was because of the ark of the Lord had arrived, the ark of the Lord had arrived, they panicked. Let me tell you something, saints. The devil panicked when he knew the Lord is around. Come on, somebody. I want you to realize something. That's why he said you need to be filled with the spirit. Amen. And don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the enemy trembles at the name of Jesus. See, people get kind of edgy when they know that somebody loved the Lord is around. Now, many times what happens when you come around and they know you love the Lord, what actually happens is they come against you in a mean and nasty way. But you got to realize something. God has given you faith, but the devil is working with them in fear. You wonder why some people don't like you? Why they talk about you, come against you? Because deep down in their heart, they're fearful of you. Because they know that our God never fails. They know it. Now, a lot of times they, listen, when they know that the presence of the Lord is there, you start seeing people acting a little shaky. All you got to do is walk into a room and people getting high. People drinking. People cussing. People acting crazy. You notice for a minute they shut it down. Because they know a different spirit came in the room. Come on, somebody. A different spirit came in the room. Amen. Watch this. I'm talking about victory in 2023. Watch this. They said the gods have come into the camp. They cried. This is a disaster. It's a disaster for the enemy. But it's a blessing for us. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. All right. Spiritual victory comes only from an alive and active faith. Listen. Israel had turned away from God. And was clinging. To a form of godliness. A symbol of former victories. People in churches often try to live. On the memories of God's blessing. But you got to realize something. God is an ever present help in a time of need. 
See, God is here right now. See, you don't want to live off the memories. You want to make memories as you go forward. Amen. You understand? Because God did something yesterday. You ought to be looking for God to do something new in your life today. Are you listening to me? Listen, victory in 2023. You got to have a mindset of victory. A mindset that things are going to change. A mindset of being a winner. Let me tell you something. The Bible said, though a man think of in his heart, so shall he be. Now, if you know that the scriptures say, though a man think of in his heart, so shall it be. Why in the world would you think negativity? You got to realize some every negative thought is the devil trying to break through on your victory. Every negative thought is the devil trying to break through on your victory. I want you to begin to start looking at things through spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes. Stop letting things that are going on around you that you see in the flesh deter you or even draw your attention. This year, I'm not even looking at people's foolishness. Are you listening to me? Listen, everybody say, I, I am not putting up with people's foolishness this year. Hallelujah. It's time to grow up. It's time to move on. Victory in 2023. I'm just teaching Sunday school. Lord have mercy. Listen. I want you to realize something. Listen to this. The Israelites wrongly assumed that because God had given them victory in the past, that he would do it again. Now, even though they had strayed away from him, listen, I don't know what make people think that God is always going to work in your life even when you're totally always messing up, but he does. But he does. But he does. Because he's always, listen, trying to lift you up higher. Trying to shift. He constantly keeps trying to prove himself to you. Show you how much he loves you. Show you how much he can. Listen, you know good and well you got blessings in your life you didn't deserve. Huh? I'm talking about when your credit was so bad it wouldn't take your cash. God made a way for you, didn't he? Didn't he? Come on now. Don't, don't please now. Come on now. Huh? Huh? God put you in the right people at the right time with the right attitude. They had a little faith in your situation. Huh? That's God working in your favor. Clap your hands for God this morning. Y'all just give God a hand clap. Yes. Listen, what I'm trying to say, this is even for your pastor. I have to keep my relationship fresh with God. I don't want no stale relationship. I want it to be fresh. That's why I get up 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning today. Didn't have to get up, but I got up today. Building on that relationship with God. Talking to God, hey, how you doing, Lord? It's 5 o'clock. I'm ready to go. Church don't start in five hours, but Lord, I'm ready for you. What you got to say? What you want to tell me? What you want me to do? Which way you want me to go? Talk to me, God. Hallelujah. Amen. And God began to work on you. Let me tell you, if you're going to have a relationship, you got to talk to people. Listen, listen, Lulu, if you're going to have a relationship with God, baby, you got to talk to him. It don't matter what age you are. You got to let them know you want to hear Listen, Noah did three things. Three things. Change, listen, saved the whole family's life. Listen, the rest of the world was covered with water. What did that man do that made God save him and his whole family? Number one, he listened. He listened. Let me tell you something, saints. You can't miss church. You can't be late. You can't miss service. Because, listen, the very ingredients that God want to put in your ear, you miss. That's why he drag you out. Amen. See, y'all let him drag you out before you get it. See, then you ain't got to worry about it. Ain't got to worry about you. He got you everywhere but where you're supposed to be. Can I get a witness? Watch your toes. He dragging you everywhere. Stop that. Let me tell you something. God is a nail in a sure place. You can't be have your focus everywhere. Or unstable. Listen. Oh, God. You can't be unstable. You got to have stability. Let me tell you something, saints. I remember when I had one member. One. 
And I kept on preaching and teaching. Preaching and teaching. One member. But God will show you what to do. God will keep you, but you got to keep your relationship fresh. You miss too much. Especially at Magnify. Now, I don't know about nobody. I know if you miss something at Magnify, you don't miss a lot. We got people right now saying, Lord have mercy, Pastor, you done taught the seven churches. Because the seven churches teach you how to pick your church. That's why you see people don't touch Revelation. Revelation, we just go back and forth all through Revelation. How you do? Because keep that relationship fresh. God will teach you stuff. We can't afford to be like the church of Ephesus who lost their first love, who had every program in the world in the church. We can, listen, we cannot be like the church of Pergamos. We can't be like the church of Pergamos. We cannot be like the church of Sardis. We can't. We got to be a church of Smyrna. We got to be that church that God don't rebuke. You understand? That is doing what they're supposed to do in the natural and in the spiritual. Are you listening to me? Yes, you go through persecution, but isn't that exactly what the church of Smyrna went through? Persecution. Why? Because they got it right. He said, listen, if you think you're going to live in this world and don't go through persecution, you got it wrong. Now, I don't know who said, I don't know about this pimp preaching and prosperity crap. I don't know nothing about it. Amen. I got to work hard to pay my bills. Ain't nothing falling out the sky. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Amen. I ain't never seen prosperity save nobody. Amen. Nobody. But I'm going to tell you something. I learned that the worst thing to happen to you can be the best thing to happen to you if you turn it over Christ. Them things that's happening to you, and listen, you've been tried seven times in the fire to your purest go. Now you love God. No matter what happened, hell and high water, I'm not turning back. You know why? Because you've been tested. You've been tried. You've been forged in the fire. Steel gets harder when you forge it in the fire. You want to hear some foolishness, you got to go somewhere else. Listen. <laughs> Spiritual victories often come from small steps taken for God. Small steps taken for God. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. Tell somebody, stay in the word. Tell them, stay in the word. All right, then, Jonathan told him. We'll cross over and let them see us. He said, if they say to us, stay where you are, or we'll kill you, then we'll stop and not go up to them. I'm talking about 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. But if they say, come up and fight, then we'll go up. That will, the Lord's, that will be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. Spiritual victories often come from small steps Taken for God. Let me tell you something. Jonathan didn't have the authority to set nothing off. He didn't have that authority. But let me tell you something. He started a small scrimmage. All right? And what I'm trying to tell you today, you need to start something. Listen, you may start something over here in this corner. Just be a little, little spark you moving for God. A little something you're doing over here for God. Just a little devotional you're sending out. You might be over here in this corner. You might be just starting a little prayer meeting. A little prayer meeting. Okay? You might be starting something over here. You're just doing a little preaching, a little teaching. Listen, he said start a little something. Start a little something. And what happened is, Jonathan started a little scrimmage on one end. And what happened is, those Hebrews that was following the Philistine, they turned on them. And when they turned on them, then what happened? They turned and began to fight for God. The little scrimmage people started to fight for God. And then all of those that were afraid got in the battle and started fighting for God. See, what you got to realize, son, you're trying to win everybody. You just need to start your scrimmage. Start your scrimmage. Because that scrimmage is going to pick somebody else up. You understand? And see, before you know it, we all in the battle and we all fighting and we all winning. Are you listening to me? Start your scrimmage. Listen, don't sit up and say that, you know what, I don't really have nothing to contribute. You know, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. Well, let me tell you something. You're a saint, ain't you? All right? You ought to have a fire in you to get something started. 
I don't care if you're singing. I don't care if you're doing drama. Let me tell you something. I walk into church and I say, they got a drama going on. Pastor, we got drama for you today. Really? I didn't know y'all was doing drama. <laughs> but see, start a scrimmage. Start something. Let this be the year you make up your mind you're going to start something for God. Amen. How long are you going to wait? We're going to be 90 years old. Well, I guess I'm getting ready to start something. No. Amen. Get it started now. Amen. Let's get some praise dancing. Let's get some, some drama around here. Let's get some things. We come into church. We get just stuff going on everywhere. Amen. That's what I like. Amen. I love to see that. Yes. I love to see people get stuff started. Amen. Amen. Listen. <laughs> Woo. When you are facing a difficult situation that is beyond your control, ask yourself, what steps can I take now to work toward a solution? Let me explain something to you I learned about God. I hear people sit back and say, well, I'm waiting on God. God ain't said nothing. Then they let their whole life slip away just waiting on God. I learned one thing about God. God wants you to make a decision. He said, how long are you going to suffer between two opinions? How long are you going to sit there with a question mark like you the Riddler? When are you going to get to the point where you're going to make a move? Now, let me explain something to you. I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. I sure did. I used to be out on the street corner with one of them, uh, 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 one of them uh, loudspeakers. Preaching on the corner. Young boy. People going around, sticking their middle finger up at me, cussing at me. Stop all that noise. Were you stupid? <laughs> and they would call me stupid. They would call me silly, say I'm out of my mind. But see, what I didn't know, God was starting something. He's starting something. Now, some of the guys that used to come out there on the corner with me, some of them dead and gone. They're not around no more. But God knew we were just young cats. Love the Lord, trying to get something started, kicking something off. Amen? Yep. And I look at what God has done today from that little fella out there getting cussed out, talked about, called stupid, dumb, everything else. But, but, I kept going. You got to realize some saints, in order for you to have a victory in your life, you got to keep going. Let me say, when, when you're facing difficult situations, there are times in your life where you got to make a choice. What I want you to realize is that, listen, if you make a choice, I want you to realize that God is able to balance out your situation. Amen. Now, it's times I made a bad decision, but let me tell you something. God, come rescue me. Amen. God will work it out for me. You understand? But at least God knows I'm man enough to make a decision. You understand? Listen, if you're a man... You got to make decisions. Yes, you understand? You got to be able to stand. And listen, ladies, if you got a husband, you got to stand by your man. You understand? Stand by his decision. All right? Now, if he ain't right, you make sure you talk to him about it. But make sure when you talk to him, you do it humble. Make sure you do it in a way where he can receive you. Because men are made different. Once you get us upset, once you talk to us, we the automatic and cut you off. We ain't listen to nothing else you say after you make us mad because that's just the way we wired. Now, if you talk nice and sweet, we'll do anything you want us to do. God knows you can mold us like a piece of silly putty. And we got some silly putty men, too. Let me tell you something. There's something y'all get molded into. But I'm telling you, it's the way that you talk to people. It's the way that you deal with people. Are you listening to me? Now listen, I want you to realize something. Ladies, don't be acting like you're so much smarter than your husband. You understand? Because something go bump in the night. You ain't get ready to go out there and find out what's going on. Amen. You need them. You need them. Amen. Now I don't know, Shayla. Maybe some of y'all should say, I, I, I said, wait a minute. Hold up a minute. Hold up, baby. Hold up now. Hold up now. Hold up now. Shayla sick the dog on you and then she coming. Amen. But I want you to realize something. Amen. You got to get something to the point in your life where you make a decision. Just a few small steps. Maybe just what you need to begin the events leading to eternal victory. 
small steps. See, I noticed today, you know, we got a lot of people want to take these great big steps. Like this here. But let me tell you something. It's the small steps where I learn what to do. Learn how to do. You know what I'm saying? See, don't nobody, sometimes we live in a world people don't want to sit up under strong teaching. The reason why they don't want to sit up under strong teaching because they already think they know everything. You understand? But I learn every day. I study every day. You understand? And see, I got to the point, I realized something, that I am, I have an ever-increasing faith. You understand? An ever-increasing hunger and desire to learn. You can't teach people if you're not being taught yourself. You understand? The blind can't lead the blind, Lulu. We both going to fall in the ditch. I got to have something to say. Now, how do I get something to say? I get to what I'm going to say from Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. See, let me explain something to you. You already got the power to overcome every situation in 2023. You already got it. The Bible says that God has given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the evil works of darkness, and they shall by no means hurt you. Amen. Let me explain something to you, saints. You got power. Amen. Somebody say power. 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 You got power. God gave you the authority. You understand? Over sickness. You understand? Power over disease. Let me tell you something. Everything that you need is already done in the spiritual realm. It's already there. I taught you the other week. Listen, ain't nobody sick in the spirit realm. Every last one of y'all got a spirit. Ain't none of y'all spirit sick. Stand up and tell me your spirit sick. I wish you would. It's crazy. How your spirit sick? So if your spirit ain't sick, you're spirit, soul, and body. If God has already taken care of your healing, why don't you just believe it and claim it and walk in it? Don't let your circumstances overtake you. Listen, I might be sick, but sick don't have me. I got symptoms. Yes, I do. But I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. I'm coming with the armor of God. You got to speak the things. You sit up and let things take control. Don't not let nothing take control of you. Amen. Stand up. God has given you authority and rights. And let me tell you something. You need to walk in it. It's time to grow up. This 2023. If you don't step up to the plate now, when are you going to step up? Amen. Come on now. Amen. What you going to do? God give you all this word, all this teaching y'all get. Amen. I look at some of the teaching you guys get and it blows my mind. I sit back and say, Lord, I'm not that smart. This is amazing. Amen. I mean, this is me looking at what I'm teaching. <laughs> So I say, I ain't never heard a pastor say that. Well, I'm telling you. Because the Spirit of God be flowing. Yes, sir. It's just coming out. Amen. I can't stop it. Amen. Amen. I couldn't stop it if I could. Amen. Huh? You said, my pastor, how's that? Jeremiah said it's like a fire. Shut up in my bones. Huh? It's it was like fire. Jeremiah told to you, I can't control it. Once I get going, I'm gone. Things come out my mouth. I tell you, I know it's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That thing be so deep. I have to sit back and think about it for an hour or two after I leave the church. Good God in heaven. And then, let me tell you what I love about Magnify. You get the word, and then you learn how to fix your situation, and then you get the steps to walk in victory. When you come in here, you get the when, the why, and the what, and the where. You get them four things, you got victory. Anybody hear me on the phone today? Say amen. Amen. <laughs> Watch this. Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. I want to talk about some faith in action. Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. All of these people we have mentioned... Watch this. Receive God's approval. Pay close attention to the scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39 and 40. 
all these people we have mentioned receive God's approval. Watch this. Because of their faith. Now, you got God's approval because of your faith. Somebody say, I, I have God's have God. approval, approval because of my faith. Now, when you got approval, baby, that means you can walk in and do some things. Come on now. I'm not illegitimate. I'm the real deal. Huh? Come on, Mr. Jesse. I can walk in that thing. I'm the real deal because I got God's approval. Do you know you got God's approval? Hallelujah. God is on your side. You know what? Let, let, let me go back over here, Mr. Chad. Hold up. Now, well, watch this. But yet none of them received all that God had promised. Now, wait a minute. They had God's approval by faith. Yet none of them received all. Watch this, Alana. That God promised. For God had far better things. Listen to this, y'all. Are y'all in this scripture? Yeah. Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. Amen. For God had far better things in mind. Now, wait a minute, Deacon Mike. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold up. You mean to tell me that they received the approval of their faith, by their faith, yet none of them received God's, listen, all that God had promised. For God had far better things in mind for us that would also benefit them. For they can't receive the prize at the, so they can receive the prize at the end of the race until they finish the race. Listen to me. There's a lot of people today that think you're supposed to get everything in this life. They ain't worried about finishing. If some people say, well, I'm doing so good right here, I don't even know if I want to die. I want to live forever. Ooh. Now, Chetna showed me something last night where they taking the needle now and shoot it in people's heart to bring them back to life. They have a heart attack. They got a needle now. They can shoot right in your heart, bring your heart back to life. But let me tell you something. When it's time for me to go, see y'all later. I got to go. Because God got something far better for me on the other side. That's what's wrong with you. You're trying to hold on to everything here. You ain't seen nothing yet. Huh? Huh? You got people trying to prolong judgment. Those are people that are living like heathens. Come on now. If you know I'm going to hell, you better get a needle in your heart. You know what? You better pray for me, Deacon Lumps. Because it's about to get a little thick now. You're going to need that. You better, you better hope every time that heart go out, they can shoot it. Because the day you can't shoot that needle in that heart, that's it. You're done. Huh? Bye-bye. Our faith in Christ gives us present spiritual victory and assurance of a final victory. I got a final. It's not just the blessed assurance I got now, but I got everlasting life laid up for me. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. You got people like Joshua and Deborah. They conquered kingdoms. You got people like Daniel. Saved from the mouth of the lions. You got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Was saved from the fiery furnace. You got Elijah. Escaped the, the, the swords of evil Jezebel. You got Hezekiah. Rain. Listen. And, and bounce back with strength from sickness. You got Gideon. Was powerful in battles in the book of Judges. A widow's son was brought back to life. By the prophet Elijah. All these achievements were examples of faith in action. And we too got to experience victory through faith in Christ. You got to lay hands on people. You got to rebuke devils. You got to do these things. Because let me tell you something. Miracles are not over. It's not over. God is a miracle worker. Amen. 
Are you listening to me? And he's got to find somebody he can use. Will it be you? Will it be you, Nia? Will it be you, Minister Chelsea? Will it be you, Manny? When you see a situation, right? well, let me call pastor. What about you? What about you? Call on Jesus. Cast that devil out. Lay hands on him. Let me tell you something, man. We got a little girl down there in Oxford. Little girl. Mama said she got sick. She coming in and said, in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on her mama and healed her. I'm telling you today, you got power. See, what it is, you, a lot of people, you like to get in these churches where you're playing church. Ain't nobody encouraging you. You're not learning how to have victory in God. But when you come here, I want you to be an active member in the body of Christ and make a difference in the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about the master using you. It's about the master working with you. Do you know the power that you got, Lulu? The power that you got, Alana. The power that you got, Mother Lumpson. Y'all got power. Don't let me go to Matthew chapter 10. I clear I'm trying not to go over there. But I'm telling you, you got it. Too late. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Somebody read Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 for past. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Read it good and loud for me, man. I want you to show you something. You're going to have victory in 2023. All right, back to one. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out e evil spirit, spirits and, and, and to heal every kind of disease and illness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Huh? What did he do? Gave him the power to cast out demons. Gave him the power to heal. Gave him the power. If he gave it to the disciples, doggone, you got it too. Hey, you listen to me. Give me verse 7. Matthew 10, 7. Give me verse 7. Give it to me. Hang on to the mic, Shane. All right. And as ye go, preach, mm -hmm. saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, heal the sick. Clean. Do what? Heal, heal the sick. He said, as you go out, come on, somebody. As you come out in 2023. He said, Mr. Chester, when you go out, he said, preach the kingdom. And do what? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Come on here, Deacon. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. You got power. And what else does say do, Shayla? Cleanse the lepers. Come on. Raise the dead. Raise the dead. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. This is 2023, baby. We're going to be walking, talking, casting out devils, people coming back alive. Is anybody listening to me? Now, you might be on that line today. You saying, my God, listen, to I'm telling you, you got it. Come on, Shayla. Yes. Give me uh, some more of that. Give me verse 8. All right. Verse 7 was so good. I got to hear verse 8. <laughs> All right. Um, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. I <laughs> could God Almighty. Is anybody listening to me today? Are you hearing the words from the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You right there. Amen. Sick and tired of all this lightweight ministry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm looking for some heavyweights. Come on now. Come on now. Come on, where you at? Ain't nobody mad but the devil. You don't want y'all to know that. Want y'all keep on just being religious. <laughs> you understand? Keep just getting your little praise on. Huh? Let me see what time it is. Y'all have me all excited. All right. Let's go to 1 John. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm going to have victory in 2023. Lord, this pastor talking to me. <laughs> huh? I'm trying to tell you, boy. 
Ain't no telling what y'all do when y'all leave out of here today. Good God Almighty. Lulu going to be casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Huh? <laughs> oh, Lord. I was not messing with my little baby there. Me and Lulu and Alana, we going on a, we get ready to go on a revival tour. <laughs> Be casting out devils, <laughs> healing the sick. <laughs> Say, Pastor, who are these two? These are my partners right here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Coming on in. <laughs> Start them out young. <laughs> By the time they get my age, they be raising people from the dead. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I believe. Let me tell you something. I believe it. Can I tell y'all something? I'm not telling you about something that I think. I'm telling you about stuff I know. I left out the hospital down there in North Carolina. And the man had told the people, say, I don't have, they said, do you got a pastor? He said, I, I, then he thought about me. He's my supervisor. He said, well, Pastor E. Raglan, that's my pastor. He said, you got a number? I said, yeah. Say, you need to call him up and tell him to come over here and pray for you. So I go on down there to the hospital. I'm like, what in the world, Mr. Sh well, you know, what you calling me for, Mr. Sheckman? What's going on? What you, what you doing here? He said, well, I lied. I said, you lied? He said, yeah. I know I ain't had no pastor, but I thought about you. He said, because I know, I know you. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, I got a deadly infection in my spine. He said, I'm not going to live throughout the week. I said, well, the devil is a lie. I said, do you believe that God can heal? I said, first of all, do you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? He said, I do. I said, you accept God, your Savior? Yeah. Now lay hands on him. I left out the hospital. I said, listen, now I'll be back next week. Check on you. I said, I got to go to work. So I called back on that Tuesday and Wednesday, Linda. I said, uh, I need room number such and such. They said, uh, there's nobody in there. I said, wait a minute, you got it wrong. I gave him the room number again. Mm -hmm. They said, what was his name? I told him name. Say he checked out Tuesday. He gone. <laughs> oh, Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying now? I'm talking about how God can heal. How God delivers. You look at Sister Nisa. Huh? Let's, let's get somebody you know. Huh? Amen. All the stuff going on with that girl. What do we do? We got in the prayer. Can I get a witness? We want them knees out. All of a sudden, where the cancer? Cancer gone? Huh? That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Don't act like you didn't have nothing to do with it. God used you and your prayers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All these miracles, you keep writing them off, writing them off, writing them off. People I got come right into the church. Girl had a, 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 a brain to an aneurysm. You seen her sitting right here. I went to the hospital, crying, Mary crying. What the world? My baby got an aneurysm, Pastor. They said explosion, she's going to die. I said, let me lay hands on it. Excuse me, Chesney. Let me lay hands on that thing. Where, right there? I rebuke and bind it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Doctor, come back the next morning. We can't find it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me explain something to you. I ain't no different than you. You ain't no different than her. She ain't no different than her. She ain't no different than Tony. Let me tell you something. Every last one of y'all got the power. Your problem is that you're not being encouraged to use your power. Yes, use your power. Man, I tell you, I don't even know if I have regular service after this. This is good. Sound like service. <laughs> Man, we had in church already, ain't we? Come on, give God a hand clap in here. Amen. I want you to know that even though your body deteriorates and die, listen to me. We will live forever because Christ has promised that. He promised that. That we'll be, listen, just like he was resurrected, we're going to be, listen, changed into a new body. Even death is going to be defeated. 
Even death is going to be defeated. Even death is going to be defeated. Even death is going to be defeated. Even death is going to be defeated. That's why when you go to a funeral, you're all laid Ah, nah. Mama, go. She ain't coming back to talk to you. She done went on to where the chilly winds don't blow. Huh? Come on now. Me and my brother, we had to encourage each other about mama. Told you last week, I was sitting in the place where I was when they told me that mama had passed. Every time I go to Lima, Ohio and sit right there in that parking lot, I think about my mama. But let me tell you something, George. I had to pull it together, man. I said, I can't stay up here. I said, God, I got to go home. But I remembered something that mama said. She said, I'm proud of you and Georgie. You remember George, she told us? So I'm proud of y'all. She got to see her boy saved. Uh, let me tell y'all something. When you get to heaven, that's why we be telling people, don't, don't waste no tears on me. You better cry for yourself. Because <laughs> when I get to heaven, <laughs> I almost scream and shout. Because <laughs> ain't nobody going to put me out. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. I'm going to be like shouting, John, hold my mule. <laughs> Glory to God. I can imagine running a thousand miles this way and go visit mom over here. Then run a thousand miles that way and go visit sister over here. Run a thousand miles that way. And listen, don't even be tired. Don't even be tired. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praising God every day, every night. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song like you ain't never heard in your life. I wish I had a witness up in here. I'm going to give you a new song, a new name. Somebody give God the glory. Oh, God. All right, I got to hurry up. 1 John 3, 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Tell somebody, stay in the word. Stay right there. I'm going to give you all a three-step plan for victory. Three-step plan. Say 1 John. I saw first John, brother. Not John, but first John chapter 3, verse 9. First John 3, 9. Those who have been born into God's family do not sin. See, because some people you want to make a kin to sin. You ain't no kin with sin. You ain't no kin with sin. Stop thinking that sin is all right. Sin is not all right in the body of Christ. You understand? You ain't no kin to sin. You're supposed to be trying to go a different direction. And not because you're trying to please God. It's because you love God. You understand? When you love God, you're going to try to do things a different way. Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Because God's life is in them. See, God is in me. When I heard him here, listen, I ain't got to go far. Because <laughs> he's right in my heart. Come on now. Yes, sir. Somebody think you got to go all the way to heaven. No, it's right there inside you. So they can't keep sinning because they have been born of God. With Christ's help, we can experience significant victory over sin. Now, it's a whole lot of people I see try to say, well, Lord, I can't help myself. Well, you need to rebuke that spirit of lust in your life. Every day of my life, I got to rebuke a spirit, whether it's lust or whatever. Some of y'all sitting here trying to act like you're perfect. Stop lying to yourself because you ain't lying to me. I know you ain't perfect. Because I got to rebuke all kind of spirits sometimes, Lana. That's right. Like that pint of ice cream I wanted to go get last night. But the, but the enemy beat me too. I had to go get it. Nigga, love to just pray for me, man. I wasn't supposed to do it, but that hydrogen dyes was calling my name. I try to sit up there and be spiritual. <laughs> they say, you know, spirit is <laughs> I put them sweatpants on, went on down the hallway, went on, got that pint of ice cream. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you got to realize something, y'all. You really be fighting stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, Not some of y'all get what I'm saying, don't you? I know you get it. Yes, sir. I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I'm not there yet, but I'm trying, Lord. 
Glory to God. Come on now. Amen. Every day. We all have areas of our life where temptation is strong and habits are hard to break. Yes, sir. I clear y'all. But these weaknesses give us, give the devil a foothold. See? So we must do See, I can't do that every night. I can do that every now and then. It's okay, but I can't make that a regular routine. Because your body don't need that much sugar every day. Are you listening to me? Every now and then you treat yourself, but don't get crazy. Amen? All right, sugar be 350. You're talking about what happened. That pint of ice cream happened. That's what happened. Amen? Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody really got what I just said right there. Come on now. You're struggling every day. All right? All right, and I know it. You know, seem like every time you turn around. Let me tell you something. I had a load, and they refused these boxes. Now, of all the things in the world was in the boxes. And I'm telling you now, it, it could have been Band-Aids. Come on now. Could have been deodorant. Huh? Come on, y'all. Could have been socks. Why it had to be candy? You understand? See, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you know what? I'm telling y'all, the enemy got a conspiracy working against y'all. Yeah. I'm out of there. I mean, I'm right down, baby. I got 12 boxes of candy behind my head. 